What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another match preview. Obviously we play Man City tomorrow night under the lights at the Etihad 5.30 kickoff. I mean, how are we going to stop this team? Yeah, I mean, they are in irresistible form at the moment, Man City. There's no getting away from it. The way they're playing, it's not just the way they're scoring goals. They're scoring goals for fun in most of their games. Um, but defensively, they're conceding so few goals. They, they've conceded, like, since we beat them 2-0, they've conceded something stupid like three or four goals. Like, really, they're keeping clean sheet after clean sheet. And when a team is that defensively solid and when they have that much that much talent going forward, they become easy, they become impossible to stop. And that's, what, that's what's happened so far with Man City. It, they've... they've all of a sudden, they've changed from their base of very high pressing, um, free flowing football to they've got those two defensive midfielders there in Rodri and Fernandinho a lot, and they got that full line in Gundogan, and then all they got Foden, Sterling, Bernardo Silva just floating around, and they're really, really uh, hard to stop. And that, and, and um, pretty much since they since we beat them, they've been unstoppable. That Gundogan, he's he's like completely switched it around this season, hasn't he? Nine Premier League goals this season since kind of mid December. He's just been on mad form. I mean, how are we going to stop this guy? Yeah, nine goals this um, in uh, this season, which is probably better than any of his return um, at any stage um, in any season since he's come to Man City. He's really become um, an amazing num force number nine, uh, which is uh, which you wouldn't think of someone like Gundogan um, to do because he's never been so much of a goal scorer. He's always chipped in a few goals five mm. six here and there but uh, now he's really become a regular goal scorer like a poacher as well he's uh, uh, finishing from outside the box he's finishing from inside the box he's going to be really hard to, to stop but what I, one thing I would say is um, I'm sure uh, Dyer and Toby or whoever we're playing in defense would rather be facing someone like Gundogan than someone like Jesus or Aguero uh, from that point of view. Um, so he could that just could be bang positive. it in from anywhere. 30 yards. He's got, what a shot he's had. Some of these goals he's scored you know, over the past couple of weeks are bangers. Yeah, he's always he's always had a good shot on him, for sure. And then it's going to be hard to stop. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I'm sure physically and from that point of view, from a defensive point of view, they would probably, if you ask them who you'd rather face, they'll probably say Gundogan from that point of view. Mm. Uh, which maybe we can take some... Uh, I don't know what you can take from that, but um, obviously it's not just good. Slim one, pickings, is it? Though, it yeah. is slim pickings. You got because obviously he's in great form. You got Sterling, who's coming into form now as well this season on that left hand side. You got Phil Foden, who's um, ha being fan he's been fantastic pretty much all season. Um, he's he's going to probably play on the right hand side, especially against Liverpool. He ran riot, really came of age in that game. I was so impressed. Um, and even with De Bruyne missing, they don't they don't miss the creativity. You got Bernardo Silva there, who's uh, a fantastic player. So, it's. Uh, I think it's just a case of, despite the fact that um, they're so good going forward, I think it's a case of we have to make sure that when we get our opportunities on the ball, we take them, and that's why I'm. In, I'm. I would encourage Jose to stick with the pivot of Ndombele and Hoybier, despite the fact that it might lead to um, some chances for City. What on the flip side, if we do get a chance on the ball, we're going to have some more attacking players on the pitch to exploit that. So that's the best way we have to combat it. Mm. When you look at it, the old enemies going head to head in this game, Jose Mourinho, Pep Guardiola. Uh, in terms of their record for Spurs and Man City, it's actually two to nil uh, in, in favour of Jose Mourinho. It is, it is. Uh, two games at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Obviously, when he first joined, well, not when he first joined, but in his first season when Steven Bergwijn made his debut and then obviously at the start of this season when we beat him 2 nil as well. Um, but when you look at the actual game and you look at the way the both teams are going to set up, you really expect Spurs to sit in a low block this game. And if we're going to get any sort of joy out of this game we're basically going to have to have a completely faultless game aren't we yeah and that's uh, how, how you have to be against man city especially when they're in this kind of mood um uh, what uh, yes Mourinho has a perfect record so far against pep to two nil uh two nil up in that sense but that doesn't mean anything going into this game unfortunately i don't think um I, I, the only the only thing i would say is pep sometimes has has been guilty of overthinking things when um 
tasked with uh, upping his performance, for example, like against Lyon um, in the Champions League last mm. year. Man City were going good. There was no reason to change things up. They coming up against Lyon in a one-off time. You're thinking, just go with how you've been playing. And then he changes the formation and tries to combat things and end up being his undoing. So maybe that maybe that could be something he might do in this game, thinking that, you know, Reno's tuning up against him. He needs to change his approach um, to win this game. But I'm hoping Mourinho comes up with a plan, seeing how Man City have been in the past few few uh, weeks, um, have how good how, how good they've been. You know, Mourinho has always uh, liked to throw in a curveball, doesn't he, tactically? And I'm sure he would have looked at the game on Wednesday night and seeing how good we've been on the ball, and he will look at how Man City are playing and thinking maybe our best route to getting a result is to try and get a few goals. Mm-hmm. Then maybe I'm hoping that's that, that's the only thing because otherwise I can't see us holding them, holding out with the mistakes we're making at the back mm-hmm. of the moment. I really can't. Oh yeah, when, exactly. When you look at when we played them earlier on in the season, we just weren't making those mistakes, were we? At the back, we just weren't making those mistakes. We were keeping quite a few clean sheets at the time. But things have changed a lot since then, drastically. I think at the time, yeah, back in November, we had Sissoko and Hoybier literally as two extra centre-backs almost in a back six, um, mm. keeping things tight. However, teams got wise to that. And, and the first team to get wise to it was Crystal Palace when uh, we took the lead 1-0 and then they kept press, pinning us back, pinning us back, pinning us back and we struggled to get out because we had no outlet. Because yeah. when Hoybier and Sissoko were so deep, who's there to push the, the team up the pitch? No one. Um, and then all of a sudden, teams found that out and we've struggled since then pretty much I think since that West Brom game since getting in Dombele back in the double pivot it's allowed us an outlet to get up the pitch a bit more and it's allowed a, a bit more creativity allowed a bit more control of the game however against Everton what was Arn doing was mistakes so if we can make less mistakes and have a bit more control and when we do get the ball within Dombele in, the, in a bit deeper he will be able to get around the press of what when Man City press us and that could open up space. That could open up space for Son, for Kane, for Lucas, Lamella, whoever's there. So that's the game plan, I think, that has to be done. Otherwise, if we have Ndombele too far forward, mm. I feel like he could, be, even though he had a good game against Man City in the home, in the home game, he could prove to be a bit ineffective. That's what I'm, that's what I'm worried about. So that's what, I want, that's what I want to see. And he's done it before against Man City in a, in a double pivot for Leon, um, and even for Spurs, a... Uh, 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 um, I remember when we played the Etihad, we drew two all early in the season in a pretty good game then. So I, I want to see him in that in that position and I want to see him in a battle in midfield, not just um, offensively looking for a final ball or something. I want to see him in that battle competing with Rodri and with uh, Gundogan or whoever's in there because I think he'd come out on top. Mm. When you're looking at our squad, obviously we've got notable injuries in terms of Regulon and La Celso, who yeah. could have been really big pluses for us. But when you look at the Man City side, they've got their own injury problems to worry about, which they haven't done the last couple of weeks. Um, is that a bit of a plus for us? Yes and no. Um, hearing now that Rodri and Diaz are set to be fit for the game that pe- off the Pep's uh, press conference, which they, apparently there were doubts in midweek and now it looks like they're going to be fit. So the injury problems aren't too much. They've got De Bruyne out, but they haven't missed him. Sergio Aguero... He's out, but how mad is it to have a player of De Bruyne's quality? You know, some would say, most would say, probably the best player in terms of quality in the Premier League. And for someone like that to be injured and for it not to affect you, I mean, how hard is that? That's how good their squad is. I mean, when you've got players like Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, I mean, it's easy not to miss someone like De Bruyne. Um, They've got the players to cover. And uh, although they probably aren't on the level of De Bruyne, they have the potential to be, and they're stepping up at the moment, um, and they're playing absolutely fantastic football. And they they've mi- they haven't missed the the creativity of De Bruyne whatsoever. And it just means when he comes back, he just will just add another element to their game, which is even more worrying. Um, Diaz has been a revelation um, ever since he's come into the back line, pretty and you, much. And you've got a player like Laporte, who was absolutely astonishingly good last season. He can't even get in the team now. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable uh, when you think about it. Look, he's one of the best centre backs in the Premier. He pretty much that one season, like he dragged into the title. Pretty much that one season uh, pr- uh, when um, they were battling Liverpool, uh, he he came in and made all the difference. Mm. But and then he got injured, and then everyone blamed him being injured to why they didn't challenge last season. And yet he can't even get in the team this year because Diaz has been so good. And you've got to say John Stones. Yeah. John Stones has really come into his own again. He's been he's, a revelation. John yeah, Stones. as well. Yeah, but. Also, Carl Walker can't get in the team because Cancelo has been one of the best fullbacks. Come in the back league. home, Carl. 
I mean, yeah, I'll take him at the moment for sure. But like, um, Cancelo's been unbelievable. He's uh, playing he's, more as a midfielder now, Cancelo. Yeah, but a midfielder, well, whether he's there or on the right, he's, so he's quality. He's got real quality on the ball, and it's taken him a while to get into the team. But they've got threats all over the pitch, and when we're, and you know when you've got Foden and Cancelo up against someone like Ben Davis, that sc- screams. Uh, danger doesn't mm. it absolutely scre- and Chelsea completely exploited that side of the pitch and I'm expecting um, Man City to probably do the same surely they do a loss you for you <laughs> know so. so maybe we could fluke it we have some busky on Man City at the moment <laughs> don't we yeah, we, we, do. Have, we, we do have some we juju do, we, we do. have some we juju do. over we do there. have some juju over Man City ever since moment. you know the Champions League game uh, where we completely fluked that one VAR again that same season wasn't yeah it? VAR um, or was it beginning of next season the next season, there was VAR at the Etihad when we in the last minute, mm. and then there was a we saved the penalty, and then we got Sinchenko sent off, and we fluked it that game one two nil. Sinchenko and yellow card. card. <laughs> That's what we need a bit of bastard, be yeah. bastards, man. And then and then the then the beginning of this season, I think that was probably the only one where you probably say we deserved it uh, in a, in a two nil win. But even so, they still had a host of chances. They you know had what I mean? they, they were had peppering a few, us the whole game. They were definitely peppering us. I wouldn't say they had a host of chances. Obviously, they had that goal ruled out though didn't they when it was handball on Jesus and there was a close one Jesus um, Jesus um, that was a close one as well and that was a 1-0 and we end up winning that 2-0 so that's the only thing we have going for us at the moment the far record against Man City of late they seem to we seem to have one over for, for, on them so that, that well, might give us some hope but I feel like you need to, when we're playing against Man City, when we played against them last time, we were at 100%. We had Regal on there. We had Kane and Son on top form. Uh, Bergvan working well for the team. We had Hoybier and Tosoko working as centre-backs. We had Toby and Dyer in a really good uh, spell Moment, of form yeah. where, where they weren't making mistakes. Aurier was playing well. Lloris hadn't made a mistake in a while. We were at 100%. We're not at 100% right now. So whether we can muster a performance and they together, are, and they, exactly much. they are. So whether we can muster a performance together to get um, a win or even get a draw out of this game, uh, big. I mean, it's unlikely. I'm not when, gonna lie, it's unlikely. You, but you, you never know. When you look back at our past, like three or four performances against Man City, it's always kind of the same. The same players always really coming up for us in terms mm-hmm. of Undombele, Hyunmin Son, Harry Kane. Mostly ha- Son, yeah. Yeah, mostly Son, but you got to put Harry Kane in there. So how? How important are these players going to be for us? I mean, it's going to be imperative for well, them to play well, isn't it? When was the last time Kane scored against Man City? I think it was back at the Etihad when we won 2-1, when Ericsson scored that that's late true. winner. That's true. I think that's probably the last mm. time he scored. So it has yeah. been a while since he... Well, he has missed a lot. He seems to always get injured before yeah. Man City game, <laughs> it's doesn't true. he? It's actually a rarity. He, got, he got injured the first leg of the Champions League and was out for the second leg yeah. and was out for the other game that because we played them the few days after that Champions League game, didn't we? And we lost one. We just looked Phil Foden actually scored that yeah. game. We lost one yeah. nil. And then I think he played at the beginning of the season after, didn't he? Um, yeah, I think he played that game, but then he got he was injured for the one where we won't beat them when Bergvijn scored the yeah. winner. He was yeah. injured for that. and But he was, I remember he, he didn't do much in terms of attacking wise when we beat them 2-0 early this season, but Carragher gave him out of the match because he was the master of the dark arts, he was saying. And we're definitely going to need some of that Harry Kane uh, on Saturday for sure. The only thing I can hope for is if we do if we do um, ha- go with a pivot of Hoybien and Dombele. I feel like Man City obviously will be committing a lot of players forward. Um, and if with Fernandinho injured, they could have a lot of space um, uh, in in to play with. And with Son, Kane, and hopefully Lamelo and Bergvine there, that could prove uh, a source of um, confidence for us to attack. In in previous games against Man City, in in like building up to the game, you would say that there will always be chances in there for us. There would always be chances in there for us, but they're just not c- conceding goals at the moment. So, are there going to be chances in there for us? Well, tomorrow? you say there's always chances for us, but I think literally against Man City in the game we won two 0 like there were only two chances. Yeah, we literally <laughs> two chances. We had another chance that was ruled out for offside. That was a great goal. Apart from that, there was very few chances. We beat them two 0 when Bergvine scored. That was pretty much our only two chances of the game. We've just been ex- super clinical. Uh, you can even see that from the XG. I think the XG of our last um, three games against Man City, I think it's six. We're six two up on aggregate, but they're like eight. They're like eight one up on the yeah, XG and got like what like 30, 40 shots on target. So something ridiculous, something stupid like that. So I mean, it's going to have to be a similar performance. Obviously, if we can, on, I believe if we concede the first goal, it's game over. I really believe that. 
doesn't matter when it's scored. It could be the first minute, whatever it is. If we do concede the first goal in this mm-hmm. game, it is game over. We, yeah. the, we have to cut out the mistakes. We have to make sure that um, that we're not just giving away sloppy things like Dyer did against Chelsea and that we can't be doing that. We have to be on our game 100%. And when we get our chances, we have to be able to be seen as a threat. Because if we're, if we're, if we, even if we're not, even if we're necessarily not getting shots on goal, all we have to do is be seen to be um, shown to be a threat, getting in positions where we can hurt them, and it'll give them something to think about. If we're not even doing that, then they're just going to pile forward, they're gonna, and, and they will end up getting a goal from somewhere. That's yeah. what I'm worried about. We have to be uh, be seen to. Um, give him something to think about going the other way. I just fear that if Man City do get an early goal, it could be a big scoreline. Yeah, it I, can. Really I really do fear that. I, I really do fear because that of because the you know as well, as well. exactly. If we go one nil down early, them getting another goal, our confidence is gonna be shot completely. And we all seen what happened this season when our confidence does get shot. I mean, we conceded. I know we were confidence weren't shot in the midweek, but we conceded five goals against Everton on the midweek. We so did. we need we to did. be we need to be literally 100 times better if we're going to get anything out of this game. Yeah, and it's we uh, and that's what worries me as well the fact that we played Everton 120 minutes. Um it was a very draining game. You could see we put a lot into that game. We we put a lot of energy into the game. The way we dragged ourselves back in the game four times, that took a lot of effort from the team. That wasn't easy. And um the, and the fact we did all that and ended up losing the game in extra time 5-4. Um means that going into this game, the confidence is, is bound to be low. It's bound to be low. And that's what I'm worried about. And if we do have a bad start to the game, which we've, you know, we've sometimes done against Man City then or in big games, then that could, that could spell trouble for us. But on the flip side, if we do get that early goal, do you reckon that will kind of keep the confidence levels at a good point where no. kind of we can go on and get something out of that game? It'll give us something to hang on to. It'll give us something to hang, hang on to and we're going to need that. We're mm. definitely going to need that because if coming from behind against Man City is not in a position you want to be. Trust me, it's not a position you want to be because they make in, it so hard for you. In previous years, you might have said that, all right, it wouldn't be too bad to go 1-0 down early against the Man City side because their defence, they would just play so open. But now they're just so not open and their defence is just so good. Since Pep's come to Man City, this is the best defence we've seen by far. By yeah. far. Yeah, they've never they've they haven't def- they've haven't defended this well. Uh, they've all, I think they've always had a good defense, but they haven't been this solid. I think, and you'd always felt like you got a chance against them, but at the moment they're not. They don't seem to be giving up, giving away those chances. So it's going to be really, really tough. And you know, if they sharp shop, they'll completely destroy us on on mm. the counter attack if we if we go forward a lot. So it's really. It's tough to see where we can get win this game. It is it's a tough. They there's they really, they really don't have a weakness. Let's be honest. They they you can't pinpoint any player on that pitch and say he's a weak link. He's a weak. Link. There's no one really there. Maybe the left back Mendy or Zinchenko, possibly. But still, they're pretty solid players. So it's all about us stepping up. Um, being better than we've been throughout the season, um, relying on our big players, Undombele, Son and Kane to really hurt them. And um, it's all about the team effort. Everyone needs to work for each other. We can't leave anyone high and dry and, and, and vulnerable. We need to, the wingers, Lamella and Lucas or Bergwijn, whoever it is, to be tracking back the fullbacks, not giving space away. And we need we need quality on the uh, on the ball. That is so crucial that when we get on the ball, we have quality. Because if we don't give them any trouble going back and give them anything to think about, then there's only one win in this game. Mm. And you got to look back at our form from November, um, kind of October, November, where we were really tight at the back. We weren't conceding goals. We were super clinical with Hume Min Son with his 50% conversion yep. rate, with Harry Kane with his non-stop assists and goals as well. We need to get back to that mentality uh, if we're going to get anything out of this game. We need to be at our clinical best with Hume Min Son and Harry Kane finishing any sort of chance that come their way, pretty much. I, think, I just think we need to have more of the ball. We can't, we can't survive this game if we, if we give them 80% possession because you've seen what that recently we can't rely on these defenders maybe we mm. could have in november but i don't believe the conf- the way the, this team is confidence wise that if we do sit back that deep and allow them that much possession 
then I think they're just going to pick us off. So I think if we can get a bit more of the ball, if we can get a bit more of possession, if we can hurt Man City a bit, that's where the confidence will will go from. Because I believe the players, will, I, I, the negativity in the squad and the players will just be thinking it's only maritime for City score if we keep defending like this. So that's what the mentality is going to be thinking. That's what I'm worried about. So if we can get some confidence on the ball, then we can grow into the game. That's what I'm hopeful for. Mm-hmm. All right. You going for the same scoreline, 2-1-C? Unfortunately, that's why I believe it's going to happen. Um, I'm just, look, I'm writing this. And on, honestly, I'm going to write this game off and I think we're going to lose. And I just, all, all I want is to, for us not to be embarrassed, to put a good showing in, make sure we're competitive in the game and uh, and give it a go. And if, we, and if we give it a go and look like we could get a result and, and whatever, if we're unlucky and whatnot, we lose, it is what it is. Um, there's still a lot to play for, even if we do lose this game. There's a lot to play for this season. But I don't want us to be embarrassed 3-4-0 and, um, and, and our confidence completely shot. That's what I don't want and that would be unforgivable. But I'm confident we can at least have a go at it and see see what can happen in this game. If we show the mentality that we showed against Chelsea, we're going to get absolutely smashed in this game. There's no yeah. two ways about it. Um, if we show the spirit, I'm not saying, obviously, defensive mistakes aside, but I think if we show the spirit and we show the desire and show the mentality that we showed coming back against Everton time after time and pressing from the front and, you know, we looked really good in times in that game. So if we show the same kind of head that we showed without the defensive mistakes, and I'm, I really believe we can get something out of this game. I know you got to think about it this way. If we do get some quality like we did against Everton, we're going to have even more space to play with than we did mm. against Everton because Everton are a lot more of a... Um a lot more of a defensive side than Man City and they don't give us much space. So I feel, I really believe if we, if we can at least get some control and get some confidence on the ball, then maybe we can get a result. But if we, if we do defend for 80 minutes and 80% possession of, of, of Man City and all this kind of stuff, I can, I can only see it going one way. Mm. All right, so there you have it. My brother is going 2-1 City. I'm going to stick with one all my prediction from the predicted lineup. Let me know your scoreline prediction in the comment section below and join us for our watch along starting at quarter past five tomorrow night. Massive, massive game. I want to see all your positive comments in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come come on on you Spurs. Spurs.